Hello, I'm Matthew. I'm Ready Waller, and welcome to Verified Live. Straight back to that breaking news that uh, we heard in the last few moments that uh, the head of the Wagner Group, Evgeny Prigozhin, has just released his first audio message since leading Saturday's revolt. It's an 11 minute audio message. He said the group's members had started what he called a march for justice. We showed no aggression, he said, but added we were hit by missiles and helicopters. He said his supporters turned around to avoid spilling Russian soldiers' blood. Meanwhile, President Vladimir Putin and his government are projecting an impression today of business as usual. We've seen this first uh, footage of Vladimir Putin appearing on Russian television. And we'll return to that thought in a moment or two. But let's head straight to the newsroom. Let's find out more about this audio message. Uh, Vitaly Shevchenko is there for us and he has been monitoring all of that and uh, a lot of lines just dropping, Vitaly, in the last few minutes. Just take us through it. Well, this message is entirely retrospective. It's looking back at what Wagner did over the weekend. There's no indication of what Evgeny Prigozhin's plans are, where he is, and what is going to happen to his Wagner group. He was very complimentary, boastful, you could say, as usual, about uh, Wagner and what he did. He said repeatedly that it wasn't his intention to topple the government in Russia. He kept saying that his group during this march for justice, as he calls it, uh, his group did not kill a single Russian soldier on the ground. He expressed regret that his fighters had to open fire on uh, aircraft allegedly targeting Wagner during this march. And uh, he appeared to say that one other reason why Wagner staged this, this march was to give the official army an example of how things are done. Evgeny Prokozhin said, well, look, in one day we're able to cover uh, 700 kilometers, and this is the uh, level of organization, he said, that the Russian army needs to learn to match. And uh, concluding his 11-hour 11-minute message posted on, set, on social media, Evgeny Prokozhin said that this is what the 24th of February 2022 should have looked like. And of course, this is the date when uh, Vladimir Putin launched his special military operation against Ukraine. So uh, Evgeny Prigozhin appears to be saying that this, I am the man who can get things done. He also said we wanted to hold accountable those who'd made mistakes during the special military operation. Well, on the first point, he probably is absolutely true that uh, it did show serious security problems, the amount of uh, uh, acreage and uh, miles they were actually able to, to march. But on that second point about holding those uh, accountable, well, uh, it doesn't look as if there have been any major moves at the top of the military command. Well, it doesn't. Today we've seen uh, two videos, one showing Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu uh, visiting a Russian command, command centre and another video showing uh, Vladimir Putin um, addressing a youth forum held in Russia. But the, the key question that remains unanswered is when exactly those videos were filmed. It's quite possible that they were filmed before Evgeny Prigozhin's mutiny. Uh, and, and, and that's important because we still don't know whether Sergei Shoigu, the Russian defense minister, is still in his job and, and where uh, Vladimir Putin is at this moment in time. And, and these are very important uh, questions, uh, given that uh, Evgeny Prigozhin's one of his key objectives was to um, challenge um, the Russian defense minister's position and possibly uh, remove him from, from his post. Yes, interesting that uh, in reference to that, uh, he's talking about uh, registering that protest as he described it, the ineffectual conduct of this war, but not to overthrow the government. And yet, when you see how Vladimir Putin responded, uh, to calling it a betrayal, a treason, a mutiny, that's not how he saw it, uh, uh, not an attempt to, to overthrow the government. And now we have this confusion, uh, as we are speaking now, about 
exactly whether there are still charges potentially or not, because uh, that has been disputed, the notion that has been, uh, the charges have been dropped. Yes, the Kremlin spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, uh, on Saturday, when he announced this deal uh, reportedly brokered by the Belarusian leader, under which uh, Evgeny Prigozhin is to move to Belarus, um, part of the deal was the dropping of criminal charges, charges of um, um, mutiny against uh, Evgeny Prigozhin. And uh, today we've seen on uh, unsourced or uh, reports quoting unnamed sources coming from Russia which said that these charges have not been dropped yet and there are two ways of, of reading these reports one is that well it takes time for uh, Russian bureaucracy to to move and, and then these charges will be dropped eventually but the second way of looking at this is is that um, there may be a possibility that uh, Evgeny Prigozhin will, at some point in the future, uh, have to face uh, Russian justice. Vitaly, what's your take on the fact that this is an audio file, not anything in vision? Well, uh, of course, a lot of people uh, would have liked to see Evgeny Prigozhin in person and, and possibly, uh, based on that, find out where he was. But on the other hand, this is how he prefers to communicate. Over the past few months, most of his state... Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.